So a, a colleague of mine, um, I think, worked with some of the organisers in, in Brazil earlier this year. We were doing a project in Recife where we were working with artists and technologists and producers from Brazil, as well as from the UK, to think about how they might make Recife more of a playable city. And I think in that process, became involved with, with a number of the people who were putting together this conference. And so they, they told us what they were excited by, we were excited too, and it was really nice to then be able to think, how can we kind of shape something to talk about here that will kind of fit into some of these cool ideas. So it's been really nice to be part of that conversation. It was a real mystery. I think it was one of those wonderful things where you go in not really knowing. I knew it wouldn't be ordinary. I knew it wouldn't be a standard conference. There were enough kind of clues there about um, gorillas and silly ideas and um, and speed dating and doing things differently that I had absolutely no idea what it was going to be, but I knew it was going to be something a little bit different. It's a really interesting combination. I think we we very rapidly got to meet a few people and there's a nice combination I think of yeah, practitioners, students, academics, um, people who run development agencies as well as so the, sort of the funders and the funded um, as well as people who work much more in the private sector. So it's, it's been quite an interesting mix but it is quite a kind of a, a youthful, quite energetic group of people who are sort of here to play and I think some of the, the kind of prompts to play that are in the, in the studio, whether it be a, a big foot or a pineapple car, just kind of give people that subtle cue that perhaps this is something you can you can take a more playful approach to than the kind of conference. Um, I'm not sure people are as afraid to talk about money as they, they pretend they're afraid. <laughs> it's one of the first things that comes up, the, the sort of the funding landscape or the public-private partnerships. I think it's it's still kind of in, in British society sort of seen as a dirty subject, um, but artists perhaps because of the sort of the legacy of of um, publicly funded arts are often the quickest to, to em embrace that discussion, even if it's largely to kind of offer a critique. <sighs> it's, it's a tricky one to answer because they're such individual creatures. You know, one public fund is not the same as another one, one private partner is not the same as another one. In my experience, it's been better to be really um, confident and bold and ambitious with your idea and then to try and work out who the appropriate partners are that can help you to develop that idea. And if they're kind of integral to the work, then it kind of doesn't matter whether they're public or private or cultural or commercial. If they're the right partner to work with you, then you'll both enjoy working together. Whereas if you're, if you're sort of chasing funds or if you're trying to sort of pursue a partnership that doesn't have meaning beyond the money, then it can be really difficult whether it's public or private. It's been really nice for the shadowing project um, being kind of tested a bit. We, one of the things that we did get from one of our public funding partners, the City Council, was um, a kind of a prod with a stick to say you're not reaching enough communities, you're not looking in enough locations, it's gone a little bit hipster, it's a little bit city centre, you know, practice what you preach, go and find places and communities that, that mean something that you don't understand yet, uh, which was a really good provocation and we had to really ask ourselves, are we doing what we think we're doing? So for me, finding public spaces in neighbourhoods I did not know, finding partners who knew those neighbourhoods, kind of going and hanging out with um, the people in community centres and in schools. Um, and trying not to make any assumptions about what those spaces were before kind of spending some time there. It sounds really trite, but that was that was a new thing for me. I think I thought I was better at this than I am. And so understanding a bit about the fact that there's there's a kind of a yeah, I've pushed myself beyond the comfort zone and there's actually doing it. And I think that's that's again finding places that are publicly kind of considered to be important by communities who are not your own and then working out how to respectfully interact with that has been a really useful thing to do this year. Oh, I wasn't there long enough. I only got to go to Brazil for, for maybe a week because we were um, we were recruiting the practitioners that were going to work with us. Um, but in that in that short space of time, it was extraordinary, actually. The, the, the relationship that um, the Brasileños that I met had with public space was really different because they're so used to um, a kind of a carnival culture that doesn't exist as much in Europe or at least in the UK, um, that being outdoors, being quite kind of fluid with their approach to space, seem to come more easily, even though they have much more kind of politically contested public and private spaces in the brief area that I, I visited. Um, so yeah, the kind of the, the difference that weather makes, the difference that geography makes, and the difference that um, the kind of the lifespan. In, in the UK, there was this whole sort of Victorian, you put art in a building and that's where art lives didn't seem to apply. It was more art lives on the streets, there's a kind of a party feel. 
and that was an easier transaction. So that was a really useful thing. When, um, when we finished the project, it was almost inevitable that all of the work would take part as part of a street party and people came out from their homes and started selling food on the streets and there was music from nowhere. It was, um, yeah, it was a shorter hop to public um, celebration than perhaps there is in the UK.